The things that any landowner in Northern Sierra should consider, the first and foremost would be the risk of fire. And if you're not willing to address that issue, I don't think you really have any business in, in acquiring a piece of land. Fire is part of the landscape. It has been here, it always will be here. What you do on your property affects not only you, but it's gonna affect your neighbors. Fire is always a concern. And so what we're trying to do is create more defensible spaces we're also trying to uh, lessen the fuel load by taking the ladder fuels uh, away as much as we can. If fires do spring up, which they will, they're not uncontrollable. If they move into a crown fire where they're just running the tops of trees, well then look out. The primary objective is to get a flame length less than three to four feet. If we have done that, fire should come through and the flame links go down to the ground to three to four feet. We feel that we are very successful. Insects and diseases are another problem. The problem we've had in this area with insects is uh, the uh, western pine beetle. It actually kills the tree. It starts working on three to six trees and it keeps expanding and pretty soon you've got an acre or two involved. The easiest way is to harvest the timber, take the saw logs down to the mill and, and take the insects with the logs. To manage and maintain a healthy forest and keep it from being attacked by a western pine beetle or other diseases, we have thinned it out and, and allowed the trees to freely grow so there's less competition. Tree growing against tree, the insects love the weakened trees and are more available to, to kill that tree. So we try to maintain a healthy forest. In the Arcata Community Forest, we don't have fire hardly ever uh, or pests but we do have wind that shapes the dynamics of this stand of this timber type. Individual tree or single tree selection, a forester has to keep that in mind when they open up a stand because it's more vulnerable for a while after cutting if you happen to get a serious wind event. So you have to keep that in mind in what you think about each tree that you mark. I'm not a climate change skeptic. I except that we're going to be warming up. I don't know what's going to happen with rainfall, but I expect the dry season to be longer. And so I'm having to think about what's going to happen here in the next 10, 20, 30 years of my lifetime, and then in future lives of people, uh, what's going to be necessary here. I'm thinking about water and getting water into the ground. And so it gets into the streams and so on also getting species in that are more drought tolerant. I'd like to have a true oak, that is black oak, white oak, deciduous trees. So in the winter, most of the rain hits the ground rather than some of it staying in the leaves. So an open oak woodland is going to be a lot more adaptable to climate change. A denser forest with the conifers and tan oaks in it is sucking a lot more water out of, the, out of the soil. And I've noticed my streams, for example, when I first got here, they dry up in July and August. Even this year, one of my streams flowing through in this very, very dry year trickled a little bit all the way into September. So I think I'm getting some success there. As a professional forester, I often run into endangered species and having to address them on landowners' properties. Uh, I have a particular client that has California red-legged frog, which is a federally listed species. When I was told that I had California red-legged frogs, I really didn't know too much about them. And uh, I didn't really understand all the restrictions that were going to be happening and that sort of thing. Having an endangered species on your property is not the end of the world. Will you have to adjust certain things? Yes, but having that unique species on your property should tell you that you're doing the right thing. Mother Nature is telling you, we, we like to live here. Having a forester uh, such as Eric with his extensive knowledge and his willingness to learn more has really helped me deal with all the different ramifications of, of having the frogs. I'm glad to have them. Just recently, the Department of Fish and Game tore out a dam below our property, and now the salmon are able to, to uh, swim up to the edge of our property. And so we had to update our management plan and talk about the salmon. Basically, almost had to rewrite our plan. We're 
part of the Feather River watershed and that's important because everybody wants clean water and we manage it very seriously with an eye towards clean water and the way you get clean water is to manage your forest. I think anybody that has attached himself or herself to a piece of property, you can't help but fall in love with the intrinsic values of the property. Wildlife, uh, water, uh, just the, the vegetation itself, it's just gorgeous. And, and that's, that's what's happened to me. My management goal for, for this property has been to make it better than I found it. It's a living thing and it's teeming with life. And I've been given this wonderful opportunity to take care of it. Thank you.